Folks, I'd like to say a few words about the flip-flop switch model of transitions between sleep and wakefulness, to quote from the material that's on the PowerPoint slide that you can see. Flip-flop means it, it's like a, an idea that's taken from, uh, from electrical engineering. You have a switch, and the idea is that you're either, uh, it's either on or off, right? In other words, it flips to being on or off. And in this case, we're talking about the ability for humans to have, you know, either be in a state of sleep or be in a state of wakefulness, right? Uh, so in other words, you can't do both. You've got to be one or the other. And there's a few brain areas we want to mention here that, that are involved with the theory. Now, this is a theory, and it does not it's, it's not linked so much to the uh, switching between REM and non-REM sleep. We're talking about sleep versus wakefulness. And the areas here are described, the TMN is the tubromammillary nucleus of the posterior hypothalamus, right? Okay, we've mentioned the hypothalamus uh, in our course uh, as the, you know, the seat of uh, motivations and drives and, uh, and, and uh, homeostasis, the autonomic nervous system, right? So you have the, uh, another area here, so that's the TMN, right? The TMN and the, uh, the, the LH is the lateral hypothalamus, right? In other words, a lot of this comes from uh, inspired by the early work that found that lesioning or destroying the, the posterior hypo, lateral hypothalamus in cats causes sleep. And also in, in, uh, in cats, rats and monkeys, in other words, a variety of species. So we know something very special about the lateral hypothalamus when it comes to you know, stimulating uh, you know, sleep and wakefulness, right? So in other words, uh, or I should say mainly, uh, uh, mainly wakefulness, right? So as, as you might notice, well, in other words, removing this part of the brain uh, causes kind of a constant state of, uh, of, of sleep. Now, a couple of other areas here, the dorsal raffae, which is part of the reticular system in the brain stem, right? And then the locus ceruleus, the LC area in the pons, which is, you know, all of these areas are like near the, you know, the, the base of the brain. And the, the very famous VELPO, or the VLPO, this ventral lateral preoptic nucleus, also in the hypothalamus, right? So when we talk about the, just briefly to take a look at, you know, where these things are, this is the, uh, you see the, the raffae nucleus, right? The, the dorsal raffae would be in this area. And the tubo, tubromammillary nucleus is up here, right? In, in the, uh, you know, in, in, the, in this region up here, in the, you know, the, uh, hypothalamus region, right? And this would be the, the VILPO, the LPO, ventral lateral preoptic nucleus in the hypothalamus, right? And then the, uh, what else are we missing? The, the, uh, the, 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 the dorsal, so we meant the dorsal raffae, the LC in the pons. So this is the locus ceruleus in the pons right here. Now notice that, look, we're talking about this region here. You know, the, the, the connections are not that easy to read, you know, to, in other words, uh, the, the, the geography here, the anatomy of the nervous system isn't, isn't the real point here. The point here is, is more what connects to what and how this flip-flop switch model works. But notice that uh, this is not in the cortex. This would be the thinking part of the brain up here. That's the cortex. But we're talking about kind of in the middle of the brain here, right? Uh, kind, kind of in the center of the brain. Now, you know, the, uh, briefly, the way this system works is that you have the lateral hypothalamus delivering, uh, you know, and you notice that there's a plus sign here and there's minus signs here. The, the plus signs would refer to uh, uh, excitatory uh, neural messages, right? Where the minus signs would refer to inhibitory neural messages, right? So lateral hypothalamus delivers orexinergic, in other words, the, remember with the brain chemical orexin, which is linked to, to wakefulness, delivers that chemical, in other words, by neurotransmission to the, you know, the tubromammillary nucleus, the TMN, and also to the, the dorsal raffae, right, and also to the locus ceruleus down here, see the arrows here. And then they would then deliver the uh, excitatory uh, I should say inhibitory influences from uh, GABA and histamine and serotonin and noradrenaline. In other words, a number of neurotransmitters that have the effect of inhibiting the VILPO, 
right? The, the ventral lateral preoptic nucleus of the, of the hypothalamus. And notice the, the size of the arrow points are like the uh, the amount of you know the size of the message, how you know how how uh, you know the uh, um, amplitude or the you know how strong the message is. So notice that when the lateral hypothalamus is causing these structures to be uh, kind of turned on, they will then deliver their message to the vilpo. Right, so notice that when the, the ventral lateral preoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus, the vilipo has been highly strongly inhibited, well, then you have, uh, you have a state of wakefulness. The LH is in charge of, of being awake. Now, and this is where the, as far as I know, the details of the theory have not been totally worked out here, but notice that there's a flip-flop. So that in other words, there's a change in that status in which the vilipo is, is highly uh, inhibited in, into the, uh, you know, in other words, should that inhibition be released? You know, and again, the reason how that works is not entirely clear as far as I know. The VILPO would then deliver uh, inhibit, inhibition, right? Inhibitory influence of, uh, from the, uh, you know, messages from Gallinin and GABA here, GABA, right? So in other words, turning off the lateral hypothalamus. So the lateral hypothalamus is no longer delivering this excitation, you see that. In other words, the, the LH has been has been temporarily put to sleep or you know knocked out, and so because the LH is no longer turning on the, the TMN, the tubero mammillary nucleus and the DR, you know the dorsal orfei and the locus ceruleus, now the vilpo is is actually inhibiting those areas, right? And therefore, as you can see in the uh, the diagram here, well, it's kind of a seesaw type of thing. In other words, the vilpo has caused the state of sleep. <laughs> so it's this it's this uh, uh, transitioning between the sleepy state, you know, the sleep state and the wakefulness state that constitutes the basis of this, you know, th th this very famous flip flop switch model of uh, of sleep and and alertness. Again, this doesn't refer to how the nervous system switches between REM and non-REM sleep, but rather from sleep to wakefulness and back to sleep and wakefulness, right? Going back and forth over a period of days. Uh, and the people, scientists think incidentally that the, the, the transition between bouts of REM and, and non-REM sleep is, is kind of similarly, uh, not, not the same brain structures necessarily, but there seems to be kind of a flip-flop switch model in that sense also during sleep. But this is the general you know, flip-flop switch model of basically the flip-flop switch model of sleep. 